much. Well, first of all, let me just start, of course, by saying congratulations on on Drag Race and having such an incredible run. I feel like we got to really see so many parts of you and so much of the artistry that you bring to drag. So I'm curious, though, for you, how you're feeling as you reflect on it. How do you feel about your time on Drag Race and how are you feeling with a little bit of distance from it? Um, I feel very grateful. I feel grateful um, for only, you know, doing drag. It'll be two years in November for the opportunity to get this platform and to have a voice now. I've waited for a voice for a very long time. Um, and just to just be present in where I am and to like reflect on what happened and what's going to happen to see it in the future, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, overall, if I had to like think of how I feel in this moment, I would just feel grateful, you know, top four, you know, I feel very proud. Oh, good. I'm glad because I know like getting so close to the end, it can be heartbreaking, but I think what gets lost in the moment sometimes is that we've had all season to fall in love with you. So mm. you've already kind of made it to the end. <laughs> you know what I mean? You did just it. Think about it. Like I've missed one episode, just one right. episode. And first in the room. <laughs> first in the room gets the most airtime. And honestly, they they gave me some airtime. I got a lot of airtime. I feel like mm -hmm. I narrated a lot of the episodes and things, um, mm -hmm. which was really great and really funny to see. Because <laughs> like, I've never watched myself back like that, which is quite funny. So I was even giggling at myself. Um, yeah, so like not making it to the end, of course, is disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I feel very proud. And like, I know that I did well. I know I showed myself well. I know I, I held myself very professional and um, I turned a look, I performed like, you know, I, I, I just feel happy and proud. Good. Good, good. Well, I mean, speaking of watching yourself, I always think about like, when I hear my voice recorded, and it comes back, I'm always shocked by what it hears. Like, I think I know, and then I hear it. And I'm curious what it is like for you seeing yourself back in this way. Did you learn anything about yourself? Um, I don't. Uh, I mean, I guess you always learn something when you watch yourself back and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, there was just, there was so much that we recorded from like 9am into 1am. And especially in my interviews, I felt very much like myself. Like I was just having a conversation with someone and that's how they make you feel. And that's how they want you to feel. And yeah. so like, I can't say if I was like to go back to be like, oh, I wish I would have like loosened up more or anything. Mm. Because I felt like myself. I was talking to people, you know, things like that. In the workroom, I guess I can probably think of maybe I shouldn't have or been so professional, but then I thought about it and I was like, actually, no, this is like the drag Olympics. Of course, I want to hold myself professional. Of course, you know, I want to show the best of what I am and what I can do. So, you know, I have no regrets. Good. No regrets. Well, that's good. That is good. I will say, though, there is one moment I want to talk about, which I think is one of the funniest moments of the entire season that happened in this last episode. And it rega it's uh, regarding some age related shenanigans. Yes, I'm yes. curious what you were thinking when Rue came in and was presenting receipts. <laughs> you know what? Um, let me say this. 28 is the new 18 in Hollywood, okay? It is no one's business what my age is. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the competition. And it's actually quite ageist for you to ask me about that. You know, if I want to present myself as 28, I think that I should be able to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And like she said, my paperwork was fine. So what I want to say on a reality television show, I think is my prerogative, you know, mm -hmm. in that aspect. And um, she has done it herself. You know, <laughs> I have like I have the receipts. RuPaul, you know, she's been on interviews and things like that, and said funny things like that as well. You know, I think she was on the Graham Norton show, and Graham asked her, you know, so you're from Louisiana, and she's like, that's none of your fucking business, and then she laughed. <laughs> that. So it's it's. I hope I haven't seen it, so obviously I hope it's going to come off as quite you know humorous and not deceitful or like I tried to like deceive people in any sort uh -huh. of way um but yeah i just thought it was funny and you know i can be however age i want to be and also people have to remember i'm not a real woman <laughs> i'm not a real woman 
I, I know. It's talking. It's talking. I know. But like Hollywood is a character that yeah. I've made up. Of course, it is a part of myself. But Hollywood star is not on my birth certificate. Hollywood star can be however like age she wants to be. That is true. I will tell you, it comes off hilarious and charming, and you have nothing to worry about on that front. It's oh, a, that's it great. is a yeah. moment. It is a moment. I'm surprised everybody's not asking you about it because I was delighted. Oh my god! Oh wow! No, people have been asking about it, but also oh. like a couple of people have been very um, mean towards me about it, like almost insinuating that I should be voted off and things like that. So it is quite. I found it quite um, a little bit. <laughs> that's upsetting. a reach. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit upsetting in the past few weeks that like, cause you know, there's spoilers and things like that. People mm -hmm. think that I'm going home today because of my age thing. Mm. Okay. Well, that's ridiculous for what it's worth. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about something really, in my opinion, really sweet. Like I love the shade in the room, but I also really, really love the sisterhood. And I feel like you're and. Floor's friendship came at least came off incredibly pure. That's how it came across on TV. I'm curious if you can talk a little bit about that connection that you guys have and if it is what it looks like. Of course. Yes, it is what it looks like. Um, you know, Floor, I haven't known her very long, um, but I consider her now one of my best friends. And a lot of people don't know this, but I speak Spanish. And mm. they, they showed my little Spanish part in the reading challenge. And it was like very dramatic, but I actually do speak Spanish. And um, when she first walked into the workroom, I spoke Spanish to her. And so that's how we built our first connection. Um, but a lot of the similarities that we have as well, both being immigrants from different countries um, and someone who moves across the world with no family, you know, mm. no like, deep friendships and things like that, of course I'm going to instantly, you know, connect with that person yeah. because it's almost the same, you know, that's how we feel. And, you know, we've had to create new friendships and new families. And now Floor is a part of my family. And so that friendship that you see on TV is totally legitimate. And I speak to her every day, we FaceTime. I'm so excited to be going on the Work the World tour with her. And like, it just, she, it was one of the highlights of the season for me. Oh, I love it. I mean, it's one of the highlights of the season for me as well. I love watching that friendship grow. And I'm so glad to hear how authentic it is. Um, one of the other things that I think is interesting is that, you know, you got critiques about not being vulnerable on stage. But like, like Floor says, all of that vulnerability was in the workroom. And we saw a lot of it in this latest episode, particularly when you were working with your partner uh, for the makeover challenge. There's a moment where she opens up to you about losing her friend to suicide and you got quite emotional. I'm curious if you would be up for talking a little bit about why that struck you so much and, and how you were feeling in that moment. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, it was quite confusing for me. I don't know. I mean, people can see like when I heard that I wasn't showing vulnerability because like mm -hmm. I felt like I was showing vulnerability the entire competition. And there are so many conversations and things in my interviews and things that I talked about yeah. of my childhood growing up and, you know, being an immigrant in Australia and like the struggles that I've had to deal with and try 10 times harder as a black person and all these things that didn't get a chance to air, unfortunately. Um, so that was quite confusing for me, but you know, to work with Arlene, you know, and she had a dog. <laughs> when they brought the dogs in, I knew it was over because I have a <laughs> And this is quite funny. I have the same exact breed of dog that I got. Oh, no way. Yes, but mine is like brown and like liver colored and hers was like black and white little Rue. And so the connection that we also had with the dogs is just like, my dog has been there for me through everything. I've been in mm. Australia nine years and he's six years old. So he has seen me like in my ups and my downs. And so when she was telling me this awful story um, and she was telling me how Rue was there for her, I instantly just connected with her. And also like just in the queer community and just um, in the past few years, there's been a lot of suicides in Sydney. And mm. so, um, that really connected with me and I think mental health is so important. Um, so that's why it was, it was, that was a very hard episode. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I think I love those makeover episodes and those moments because we get to see a different side of the Queens. And for you, it was like really actually nice to see there has been vulnerability, but to really see you connect with someone like it just kind of like adds to the larger picture of who you are as a person in addition to be a queen. So it was very powerful. So I appreciate you being open about that. So shifting gears a little bit into something a little less serious let's be a little shady in the workroom you refused to say who you thought you thought the top four would be and i'm wondering if you'd be willing to tell me now who your top four was oh i didn't even oh that they asked that that's in there oh that's funny (laughs) Uh, i predicted the top four to be myself of course floor of course isis Mm -hmm. and ashley madison Oh, interesting. Um, you guys ended up with a great top four, but also that would have been a really great top four. That's so what I, I, I really assumed when Ashley left, I was gagged as well. Like she brought mm-hmm. a lot to the competition and um, I'll talk really highly of Ashley. She, um, it was a lot of times that I was actually, like people don't know this, but like I'm actually a fairly quiet person, especially when I'm around a group of queens. Mm. Like when I'm performing, I am fierce and bat, bat, you know? But when I'm around a lot of drag queens, I kind of, yeah, I'm not very loud. And, you know, that's just not the type of person that I am, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I was in the room with Ashley, I felt very safe because I felt mm-hmm. like she would always bring up topics and things for me to chime in. Or I never felt like I had the burden of having to hold the room with a huge personality because she just made me feel comfortable that I could just be myself and just talk when I wanted to talk. So. Oh, I love that. I love that. It's so funny. All of the other queens talked about her being the shadiest. So it's nice to hear how much you love her. I, <laughs> she was nice to me. Of course she's shady. And I think, you know, they, they, <laughs> but I don't know. She wasn't really that shady to me. Like it was quite, it was quite funny shade, I guess. Yeah. But. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So your lip sync was so fierce and in my opinion, quite even, mm. um, I was sure it was going to be a double Shantae. I was shocked that it was not. Were you thinking the same thing? Um, when I was doing it, I was so laser beam focused. And um, I didn't even think it would be a double Shantae, to be quite honest. I thought. <laughs> 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 because I was pulling out some stuff that, like, I didn't do all competition and stuff. Like, I was pulling out some, like, dips, death drops. Like, you know, I was kicking, yeah. spinning, you know, hair flicking, doing all these things. And plus the song was, like, this was the best song of the season. Good one. This was the best song of the season. And I was voguing, duck walking, you know, all this stuff. Because it's kind of, it kind of the song has kind of like a Vogue song. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, oh, this one's mine in the bag. And, but not only just by the performing, like, you know, just my track record, you know, the whole thing, what mm-hmm. it would have meant for Down Under Hat to have a Black immigrant in the finale. Like, I thought the moment, mm-hmm. you know, would have been so much bigger than what it was. And so I was, yeah, definitely gagged that that happened. And especially that it wasn't a double Shantae, but, you know, I'm not going to bite the hand that feeds me. So, uh, um yeah i just i don't know i'm I'm really curious to see it and stuff and i actually think gabriella looked great i think her makeover definitely looked great mm-hmm. and it was really hard because we all looked really good i think mm-hmm. uh but yeah i was surprised too very surprised mm-hmm. well i have a feeling this is not the last we've seen of you i suspect we will see you on an all-stars or a versus rue lives for you the fans live for you this is just the start it's just the start <laughs> And honestly, you know, I'd rather go on the All Stars, but I like the All Stars America. That's where the real money is. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Um, imagine if this was like the All Stars for this one, and I won two episodes. That's like twenty thousand dollars. Okay, so like, I want that. Hmm, this is you're making excellent points. You're um, the next Jimbo. I love it. Thank yes, you. I'll take that. You know, the top four is an amazing achievement and things. And I showed everything that I had except for my finale gown, which my finale gown is so gorgeous. Um, But I took some gorgeous photos of it that people will see. But yeah, I don't know. It's not all about the crown. It's, you know, the amount of airtime I got. It's like me showing who I am. And like, I just, I, of course, bummed that it wasn't, you know, the finale finale, but I got close enough. 
(laughs) It just means it's not over yet. That's all. That's all. Yeah. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. This has been amazing. I have loved watching every minute of your journey. And I do believe I will see you again. And I cannot wait. (laughs) Thank you very much.